Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here and welcome to the 4K for 10K camera series. If you have not yet watched it, please check out the overview video for the series where I talk about the criteria for the six candidate cameras that we are featuring. I also want to mention that this series is not about doing a direct comparison between the cameras. It is not a video based user manual for each of the cameras, nor in-depth reviews of the cameras that are featured. The whole purpose of this series is to help you figure out which camera or cameras that we are covering might be right for your productions. A camera series would not be complete without some test footage. So we decided that we were going to record to each of these cameras internally at their highest resolution and at the best formats and codecs that they could record to internally. So in this video, we're going to be talking about this camera, the Canon EOS C200. So let's get started. Let's start by talking about what comes with the C200 when you purchase the camera. So we have the camera body itself, and if you're used to the C100 or C300 series, it's very similar in size, a little bit smaller than the C300 Mark II and a little bit bigger than the C100 series. We also have a built-in EVF. We have this top handle here, which has quarter 20 taps and has a cold shoe. There is the monitor itself with the mounting system. We have the grip unit, which again, if you're used to the C100 or C300 series, you're very familiar with that. And additionally, you can buy this camera in a separate configuration. It's called the Canon C200B. You lose the EVF and you cannot add it later on. You do not get the monitor, though you can purchase that separately and add it to the unit. And you do not get the grip, so you can add that later on if you'd like. The reason that that camera exists in that configuration is for things like gimbals and drones and for mounting in those types of scenarios. I would see most people probably getting that in a PL mount for cinema style production for a small camera that's not that expensive that can also record in RAW. So those are the main components that come with the camera. I do also wanna mention that you get a BPA30 battery. It's a relatively small battery, so I would recommend either getting a number of these in addition to the one that comes with the camera, or you can go ahead and get the BPA60s, which will give you longer run time. It all depends on how compact you want the camera system to be. You do, of course, get a battery charger, and you also get what you need to power the camera off of mains. But again, if this is your main camera system, or you have a couple of them, I would definitely recommend getting a dual charger so that you can have all of your batteries ready for your productions. So now that we've talked about what comes with the C200 and about the C200B, let's go ahead and talk about the lens mount. This is a 4K Super 35 millimeter sensor, and the camera comes in either a Canon EF mount or a PL or positive locking mount, which would be perfect if you're using the camera in cine style applications, especially with cinema raw light. So we have the EF mount here, which passes the contacts to an EF mount compatible lens. And there are a ton of lenses, of course, that are available not only from Canon, but other manufacturers in the industry with this lens mount. And from Canon, you can use all of their EF, which are full frame lenses, and also their EFS lenses, which are designed for crop sensor cameras, because this is a super 35 millimeter sensor. So now that we've talked about what comes with the C200, it's time to talk a little bit about it from a camera operator standpoint. And the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna talk about the monitor that comes with the camera. And it's pretty special. It's one of my favorite things about the C200. It is a touch screen. And if you're using EF compatible lenses, then the reason you're using this monitor, not only to monitor your image, is for the touch focus capabilities and in terms of the flexibility of positioning the monitor, it's pretty extensive. You can get this monitor to almost any position that you'd want. So that's the monitor that comes with the C200. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move over here to the front left side of the camera body. So we have our ND filters over here, a bunch of assignable buttons here on the side of the C200, but they all do have default jobs or functions. So we have magnification, we have peaking, zebra, 
waveform monitor and then we can get to very quickly our display settings over here we have of course record start stop on the side of the camera body and then this wheel here which can be assigned to a different function depending on how you want it to be used generally you would set this to either aperture which is the way we have it set up right now on the camera body or to ISO slash gain so you can just quickly and easily change that when you are shooting white balance settings and also transport controls depending on how you have the camera set up so we can set the camera to either camera which is how we would use it when we're shooting or to media when we are reviewing our clips so our CFAST card slot for the C200 is located here and this is where you'd be recording cinema raw light to the camera system internally and then as we go to the back of the camera system here we also have our media bays for our SD cards and this would be when you were recording MP4 files and you can also change that to XFABC to the SD cards which gives you a true proxy workflow where you can record proxies to the SD cards and then you can record DCI 4K to the CFAST card. So this button right here is our function button and we have one of those on the monitor as well and that gives us quick and easy access to a lot of the settings we'd want to get to very regularly things like our white balance settings our ISO or gain settings and also our settings regarding our shutter speed or shutter angle. So coming over here we have our SDI out but I should note that the SDI out on the C200 can only output up to a 2K resolution. And then over here, we have our HDMI 2.0 output. And that particular port, another thing I should note, that if you are looking for something other than Cinema Raw Light or the internal recording, which is in UHD 8-bit 420, you can in fact do an 8-bit 422 output from that HDMI 2.0 terminal. And then when we look up here, we can see our two XLR inputs and they are both built into the camera body. And then we go over here to the right side of the camera body and we can see our grip unit here. And in terms of being able to adjust that, it's kind of a little bit in between a quick release and also what is on the C300 Mark II where you have to basically unscrew almost the entire handle. It's a rosette based handle here and you can just loosen it and then you can put it into a different position and then you can tighten that down. So let's swing back to the back of the camera system now and I want to talk about one other thing. We have this unique feature which is this assignable button number nine which by default is for audio status and you can see on the LCD screen that we now have all of that information showing up on the screen about our audio and of course as you can see here behind here are our controls for our levels and also whether or not those are set to automatic gain control or to manual and one other really nice feature is that when we press in the joystick any of the three joysticks that are on the camera system the back of the camera body the monitor or the grip unit we quickly and easily access the audio menu system inside of the C200. So we can go in here quickly and easily and go through and access all of the parameters related to audio on the camera. Now that we're in the menu system, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other settings. So let's jump into the first menu here, which is camera setup. And I wanna show you this option on the first page, which is the extended ND range. And when we turn that on, in the C200, what we're doing is we're enabling that second stage of ND to be able to be activated. So if I step out of the menu and we activate our ND, we can see two, four, and six stops of ND. And then I'm gonna go ahead and press it again. And now we're eight stops of ND, and then there's 10 stops of ND being applied to our image. So when you do have that eight and 10 stops of ND activated, do remember that you're adding an additional glass element to the equation. So you wanna make sure you check your focus so that it's tack sharp. We're gonna go into the fourth page here and start to take a look at the AF settings. And there are a ton of them in the C200 as well as the C300 Mark II. In fact, the dual pixel CMOS AF system in here probably arguably the best large sensor AF system that exists right now for these types of cameras 
and the options are pretty extensive in terms of what you can do. Now we'll go over here to page number five, and this is where we access additional AF features. We can turn face detection on or off, and we can see an example of that right here. And then we can also decide whether or not we wanna have face priority or face only. So with face detection turned off here and going back over to our AF options, if I have this set up, one of the really powerful features of this camera is of course the touch screen and the touch AF capabilities and just being able to decide where you do and don't want things to be in focus. So in this example, we're using the touch AF for a rack focus, but I can say that after using the camera for a while, that that touch focus is a very handy feature in lots of different types of productions. Now with our camera set to manual focus, we are gonna talk about one other thing that is a focus assist feature on the C200, which also exists on the C300 Mark II, and it's called Focus Guide. And this is a pretty powerful feature that I have used a lot on the camera systems. What you do by default is just go over to the grip and press assignable button number one, though you can assign it to other buttons on the camera system. And when you do that, you will see this little box appear. And as you change your focus, it will tell you whether or not your image is in focus or out of focus. And as soon as you see those arrows come together and it turns green, then you know that you have tack sharp focus on that part of the image. Now, in addition, if you're using a teleconverter or in our situation right here, an EFS lens, you'll have to take a look on the wide end of the lens and see if there's any vignetting at all. If there is, you can turn on the EFS lens parameter. It will do a slight push in, so it changes your angle of view just a little bit, but I'm not seeing any problems with the 17 to 55 here. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that off. We're gonna go back into the menu system and now I'm gonna go over to the custom picture HDR menu. And inside of here, we're gonna go ahead and select and go into and talk a little bit about the LUT functionality in here. Now you can see that I have LUTs that are being routed to different places with the camera. And one of the things that's a nice feature on this, which is similar to the high low key feature on the FS7 II, is that we can turn on a LUT, in this case, just a standard BT709 LUT, but we also have these HDR Assist 1600% and 400% options. And what this basically is allowing us to do is to remap our display, this screen, so that we can see the dynamic range in a different way. So we can see into our highlights and we can judge whether or not we are holding those highlights we can see into those shadows to make sure we're getting detail in those shadows. And then we can go back to, if we want, the regular LUT so we can use that as our viewing LUT. Let's go ahead and step out of there. There are a number of presets depending on how you have the camera set up, recording to SD cards or to the CFAS card. So at least currently the way the C200 is set up, if you're recording to those SD cards on the camera system, there are a couple of things that you should know. First of all, it's UHD 8-bit 420. And secondly, the color gamut that's being recorded is always Rec. 709. Now, when we jump into the menu system and we switch this over to recording to the CFAS card, we are now using this camera in an entirely different way. What we are doing is we're recording in Cinema Raw Light. So what we have here is up to a 12-bit recording, and it is not recording specifically a certain gamma or color gamut. It is recording essentially all of the information that it can gather from that sensor. And then when you go into post-production, there are various workflows where you can go in and then choose your gamma, choose your gamut, and work from there. My recommendation if you want to do a true proxy workflow would be to choose XFABC and record that to the SD cards. So now that we've switched over the camera system to record to the CFAST card, it does open up additional options under HDR LUT. And we can see here for our HDMI routing that we can turn on either an HLG output or a PQ output for the camera system. So it's just to be noted that has to do with how your camera is set. 
So now we're just going to go ahead and take a look at one more area of the menu system, which is right here, which is assignable buttons. So we can quickly and easily go inside of here and decide what we want each of those assignable buttons to do. There are two pages for the camera body itself, one for the camera grip, and then one for the screen right here. So that's how you assign your buttons on the C200. Now just one other note before we go ahead and take a look at some of the footage shot with this camera system. And it has to do with the form factor and it's true of some of the other cameras in the series. This camera is great out of the box for handheld shooting. It's also great on sticks and other camera stabilizers. But if you need to get that camera up on your shoulder for that ENG EFP style shooting, you are going to need to get a shoulder mount kit. All right, so let's just go back into the menu system here and see how we had this camera set up for our test footage that we shot at Able Cine in New York. And the main thing to just take a look at here is that we were recording in Cinema Raw Light to the CFast cards at a DCI 4K resolution 4096 by 2160. We also recorded to the SD card slots in UHD 4K at the 150 megabits per second data rate using the Canon Log3 preset. So let's go ahead and take a look at those clips. Here are our three shooting scenarios that we are going to be showing you, and they are an interior low light example, an exterior example, and also a mixed lighting example. So our low light test was really again to do something where we were shooting in low light and pushing the sensor a little bit, just a large soft key source. We had a little bit of light in the background. We wanted to make sure that there was some color in that image so that you could see how it reacts to that, but also to make sure that we had dynamic range in the frame. For our exterior, we wanted to simulate as close as we could bright daylight, but with high dynamic range throughout the image. We're not using any bounce cards. There's no negative fill. We're just using the light that is available to us in that space. And then for this scenario, we really wanted to make sure that we were kind of mimicking a typical situation where you might have some mixed lighting. We're using lots of practicals. There's obviously daylight coming into the space. And we also have a couple of fixtures that are playing here. The main one is our key light for our main talent in the foreground. And then there's a small light down there in the back left of the frame, which is just basically throwing a little bit of a pool of light into that shadowy area to lift it a little bit. And again, the goal was to show you and give you something with some real dynamic range to play with in the image. Here are our settings for the camera system for our low light test in the EOC 200 recording to SD cards. And here we are taking a look at that same frame without the information up on the screen so you can get a sense of what that log recording looks like. But please remember that if you are watching this video, that this is heavily compressed footage and you need to download the original files to really see what you can do with those images. And now we're taking a look at that footage with a Rec. 709 LUT applied to it. When we decided to put a Rec. 709 LUT up on here, it wasn't to show a color grading example. It was more to just give you a sense of what you might be looking at if you were applying a viewing LUT in production. Now we're looking at our settings when we record it internally to Cinema Raw Light to the camera system. Here's that same footage without any information up on the screen so you can see the entire frame. Heavily compressed, definitely not the Cinema Raw Light that you will see when you download the original files. And here's that Cinema Raw Light footage with a Rec. 709 LUT applied to it so you can get a sense of what that footage looks like with a LUT. Here's our second scenario, bright daylight, exterior, and our settings for the camera recording to SD cards. Here's that same footage without the information up on the screen so you can see that entire frame. And now we're taking a look at that footage with a Rec. 709 LUT applied to it. Here are our settings with the EOS C200 with Cinema Raw Light and that footage without information up on the screen. And you can see that dynamic range there. And here we are, just for reference sake, taking a look at that footage with a Rec. 709 LUT applied to the image. Now we're moving on to our mixed lighting setup for our test footage and our settings for the camera recording to SD cards. 
looking at that footage without any information up on the screen so you can see that dynamic range and what is in the frame. And here we are, just for reference, taking a look at it with a Rec. 709 LUT applied. Now we're taking a look at our settings when we record it to Cinema Raw Light to the CFAST card on the camera system. Here's that footage without the information up on the screen, so you can see again the entire frame. And here's what it looks like with a Rec. 709 LUT applied, just for reference. Again, please download the footage so that you can apply your own LUTs or grade the footage as you'd like in your favorite application. So the goal here, regardless of low light, exterior, or sort of a mixed lighting situation, was to show you a lot of dynamic range within each of these images. So we were exposing for middle gray to where we should have for each of those cameras, and that allowed us to make sure that we had proper exposure for you to start with with your images. So there you have it, that is the Canon EOS C200 and hopefully this video has helped you figure out a little bit more about what this camera is and how it might fit into your productions. Now I do recommend that you download the sample footage that we recorded internally to the camera system, load it up into your favorite NLE or color grading software and also check out the other videos in this series and the footage from those cameras. Thanks for watching.